I'm still working with PayPal trying to get some money back because he's not responding to me anymore. Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. I figured I'd jump on my phone real quick, give you a little update. I don't have my big DSLR with me because as you can see, I'm riding the bike. But in the last video you saw that little clip on my shifter cable, shifter linkage fell off. And I was reading online, it actually happens quite a bit. And it took me super, super long to find a part number. So I'm actually headed to the dealer right now to pick up a clip. As soon as I get that clip, I will update you guys with the part number. And since I know this happens all the time, if anyone has a better fix for the stupid little clip that falls off, let me know in the comment section below because I really don't want this to happen again. Not really sure how it happened in the first place. Well, since the part department is closed, I'm gonna steal some coffee. Definitely not coffee. One hour later. So after waiting like 15, 20 minutes for this lady to get here, the parts department lady, they don't have it in stock and they can't order it because the location's closing down. And so they said the, the closest place I can go to get it is four hours away. So I guess I have to go online and order it. All right, what up dudes? I am back home now, so I'm on the good camera. This is probably a lot better quality and sound and audio. What I'm doing right now is just finalizing the video for today. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. Top right corner, go check it out. It's a super dope video. I'm still kind of salty about that whole freaking Mitsubishi thing. Number one, I can't believe the dealer's closing down. So there's not gonna be any dealers in Spokane, say if I need like a little O-ring or something for my Evo, I can't just run to the dealer anymore and grab it. That is kind of annoying. Number two, I really can't drive the car until I get that clip. At least I don't think I can. Maybe I can zip tie the cable on somehow. I'm gonna head down to the shop in a minute after I get done doing all the cards and stuff in this video and see if I can just zip tie the cable on until I can order the new clip in. But I told you guys I would give you the part number for that clip and let me pull it up real quick. It's like, it's little E-clip. It's on the most inside cable. So the one that always falls off. 2460A042. So if you need that little E-clip, it's like a bent paper clip looking thing. That's the part number for it. It took me forever to find the part number online. I think they're only about two or $3, but now I gotta pay probably like $10 for shipping on the damn thing. It is what it is, that is the race car life. All right, I'm gonna finish up this video and then we're gonna head down to the shop and I need to figure out what I'm gonna do for intercooler now. If you didn't see the end of this video right here that I'm working on, um, I kinda got scammed on that ETS kit. I'll explain it in a minute. I also picked up a new set of plugs for the build just in case the old ones have too many miles on them. I don't even know how many miles they have. I put new ones when I built the motor, of course. I don't know, maybe 10,000 miles, but for 40 bucks or 50 bucks, I figured I would replace them just in case. All right, so here is the scoop with the build. The full ETS kit is on, the turbo system is done. All that's left is the intercooler, all the intercooler piping and a tune. That's all that's left to get this thing pretty damn fast. And that makes me very, very happy. If you're new to the channel, I'll kind of fill you in on an intercooler issue I'm having. So originally I bought a four inch depot racing intercooler and the reason I bought it a depot is because I did a bunch of reading online and they seem like a really, really good intercooler. And then I found some guy selling a bunch of ETS stuff. So we had a 3.5 inch, supposedly a 3.5 inch ETS intercooler kit with all the piping, ETS downpipe, just a bunch of other random stuff. And I bought all that stuff and I was like, I'm just gonna run the ETS kit because everything else, the ETS intercooler kit because everything else I have is ETS. I might as well stick with ETS. And then when I pulled it out of storage and went to go put it on the car, or not put it on the car, just check it out. I noticed it was a lot smaller than the four inch and I, the four inch depot intercooler I have. So I measured it and it's actually a three inch, not a 3.5 inch like the seller said. So I kind of got hosed on that deal, unfortunately. Um, I'm still working with PayPal trying to get some money back because he's not responding to me anymore. Typical freaking online sellers. They're just, they're so shady sometimes. So what I think I'm gonna do right now is I was originally gonna try to find a four inch ETS intercooler because that three inch is too small. I'm not gonna run a three inch intercooler on this car with the turbo system I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do, I have I thought about it overnight, I slept on it, and what I'm gonna do is run the four inch depot intercooler. I'm gonna bring it down to English. I'm gonna get the car tuned with the four inch. And in the future, if this four inch doesn't hold up, if it blows out, I'll just buy an ETS four inch intercooler. I won't need a retune going from a depot intercooler to a ETS intercooler, it's the same thing. I don't know why it would, because they say they are pressure checked up to 40 PSI. So it should be fine. But in the, in the rare event that it does, I'll just pick up a four inch ETS intercooler. So with that being said, if anyone needs a three inch ETS intercooler, 
I have one for sale. I I feel like every single video I have parts for sale. So I have that ETS three inch intercooler for sale. Shoot me a DM on Instagram. Here is the factory intercooler on the car with the factory lower pipe. There's no top intercooler pipe on it right now. But as you can see, if you didn't see the last video, the full throw kit is done. So it's a precision 6266. The intake is on with the ETS MAF housing. Everything is good to go. Um, I still don't know what BOV I'm gonna run. They had it plugged off. So I might just keep it plugged off for now and then just cap this line right here. Just cap that. So I have two external waste gates, which go to the one Grim Speed DBCS. I'm pretty sure I got all that figured out and set up correctly, but I'm not 100% sure. So if I get to English and it's not done correctly, we can change it there. So that's all the, the stock intercooler. That's what it looks like. I'll show you a better angle when I get off the car. Here's all the ETS stuff. So the ETS three inch intercooler that I'm selling now because I don't need it. I have my Synapse diverter valve, a Turbo Smart blow off valve. We have an upper intercooler pipe, the rear section, or I guess the rear section right there, that goes to the stock turbo. Here's the one I need for my precision turbo. And then lower intercooler pipe is right here and the other sections right there. I'll show you the four inch depot intercooler that I have. This thing is fat. This is a fatty intercooler. Look how thick this thing is. And I'm kind of stoked it's black. Build quality of this thing is pretty decent, honestly. So it should be fine. I don't know. There's some weird stuff about it. Like this, it doesn't really matter, but that, that bracket's welded on bent or like sideways. Um, same with that one as well. But overall, I think this thing's gonna hold up fine. Originally, I was gonna sell this to a buddy of mine. You guys may know him on YouTube. His name is Mitch Dorr. He's actually coming over here. He wants to race my FRS, which is up in the garage now, against the Salka GTS. So that'll be a fun little video. Right now, I'm gonna get this stock intercooler pulled off. There should be just like two bolts down here. One there, one there. There's gonna be a clamp here, and then two hangers right there. And that'll get the intercooler off. Then I'll have to pull this pipe off. Before I do anything at all, I have to make sure I have couplers that are going to fit this intercooler. And if I don't, I need to get them ordered as soon as possible. So thick. I'm really bummed that I got scammed on this freaking three inch intercooler. I need to make sure I have a coupler that will go from that to this pipe here. I don't think this one will work. Yeah, that won't. So that means I'm not going to have a coupler for that. I do have another coupler sitting over here, but it's not a reducer. I don't think I may be able to make something work for now. I have this coupler here. I wonder if ETS sells one that'd work. <sighs> yeah, that's not going to fit either. I'm going to do some measuring. I got to figure out what size that is, what size this is and find a coupler like as soon as possible. Let's measure it. That's one thing I did read online is people are having to buy reducers for this ETS or for the uh, depot intercooler to go to ETS piping or stock piping. So unfortunately, it may be a bit before this car runs. It looks like a three inch and this one is, so I need a three to a 2.5. I'm wondering if I have a three inch to 2.5 inch coupler from like one of the ETS intakes. Let's run downstairs. I have those two ETS intakes. Once again, <laughs> I think like I'm always plugging stuff in, in these videos for sale. If anyone needs an ETS, in, uh, ETS intake for the factory turbo or the stock location turbo, I have two for sale right now. Yeah, get at me. I'm pretty sure the coupler that goes from the ETS intake down to the stock turbo is a three inch to a 2.5 inch reducer. Let's go run back here in the storage little warehouse back here and see. Yeah, this one right here. Pretty sure this is a three to 2.5. If it is, I'd be very happy. 2.5, yes, yes. This is a three inch to 2.5 inch coupler or reducer. All right, let's see if this fits that, which it does. Dope, that should work mighty fine. We are in luck guys. So I need to order a three, a three inch T-bolt clamp. Okay, so it is time to remove the intercooler. First thing I'm gonna do is loosen up one of those clamps there are probably both clamps. There's two bolts down there, both 12 millimeters. And then there are two hangers. Now, if you don't have your upper intercooler pipe off already, like I do, there will be a clamp right there as well, going from the intercooler to the upper intercooler pipe that connects to your turbo. Well, that was super easy to remove. Next up is the lower intercooler pipe. So I had, I did have to remove that bolt right there to get the intercooler off. Now from here, we should have one clamp going from this piping right here to the throttle body. And then down here, the, one of the, one of the radiator uh, hoses bolts on 
it's like a little mount onto this lower intercooler bracket. It's way up in there. I can't show it to you. Yeah. I'm gonna set all three of these intercoolers up side by side. That thing is probably a two inch. And compare the three, let's do it. There we have a stock. That's the ETS the three inch. And that's Big Bertha, the four inch depot. That thing's just fucking huge. That would probably work fine. And that thing's just, meh. That's for stock turbo. There's definitely no point in upgrading your intercooler if you're still on stock turbo, just so you guys know. But if you're going with a big turbo, I would definitely recommend one of these here. All right, let's get this big ass thing on. Oh my gosh, that thing is big. That is so thick and I'm really liking the black. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty sick. I just hope it holds up fine, which it should. Next up, let's get this lower intercooler piper on. An <laughs> interpiper. Let's get this lower intercooler pipe on. So it's a two piece, just like the factory one, but the factory top part is just one rubber hose. This one's actually a hard pipe. So that's pretty sick. It'll be this one here coming out of the intercooler. So let's try to get this up on here real quick. Hose goes there. Dope, I got that clamp on. That'll work for now, temporary, temporary. Now this pipe right here is gonna sit right in here and kind of curve around this edge. Let's get this rag out of here. That end connects down by the intercooler. This end goes to the throttle body. And that bolt, or that bracket right there, is gonna bolt onto that. All right, last thing to do is get the upper intercooler pipe on, and then technically we should be able to start the car and run it. So this is the pipe I need for my pre precision turbo. So this will sit um, like that somewhere, if it can clear this bar. We got that coupler on to the turbo, and now we have to get the front part of the intercooler piping on. This top part is gonna slip around into there, that lower part, right to the intercooler. Holy shit, that's it guys, we're done. I just went over, checked every single clamp on the intercooler kit, all the piping, everything on the kit is tight. We are ready to go. Technically, I could probably start this car for now. To the Nimula compound, the man Mitch door. You come down here, man. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty much done actually. She goes, she goes, where's this grocery store? <laughs> Squad goals. See you, bro. Take care. Drive safe. What are you doing here? I'm just helping my boo boo out. What's in my Evo build? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Oh. <laughs> Why are you tripping? <laughs> All right, I got it in my video for today. All right, so we made some insane progress on the Evo. It's pretty much ready to start. The only thing that is not ready yet is the BOV situation or diverter valve. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna run there. But other than that, the car's pretty much. What's up? Oh, Bobby. Other than that, the car's pretty much ready to go. Hopefully next video will be the first start. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you go down below, smash that subscribe button, and we should be starting the car within a day or two. All I have to do is reflash it. I probably could start how it is. I'd rather reflash it with the base map that English Racing sent me, and then go ahead and fire it up for the very, very first time. I cannot be more freaking stoked. It's gonna be absolutely insane. The build already looks incredible with everything on it and it's going to sound good. It's going to perform fucking amazing. So thank you guys so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Really hope you enjoyed this episode of the Evo X build and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.